So you found a good deal on a used or refurbished Intel-based MacBook Air, and you've also seen one of these seemingly hundred of YouTube videos, some of which, you know, I've made myself, that say that the new M1 MacBook Air is literally made out of magic and unicorn kisses and can do no wrong. It's kind of a weird way to put that. So should you save that extra money on the Intel or buy into the hype that is the new M1 MacBook Air? Let's find out. I don't want to slam anything today. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad. If I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Hoo boy! I've been wanting to make an Apple Silicon versus Intel MacBook video for a while now. And this weekend, I was browsing the internet and I actually found a refurbished MacBook Air on Apple's website. And I decided, once I saw that, I was like, you know what? There is no time like the present to make that video. And since you all have been requesting it also, it's a win, win, win. This is you, this is me, high five, we all win. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna compare specs and features of the two generations of computers. Like I said, you can find them refurbished, meaning you're saving a little extra money. And if you are also considering that and the cheapest of the MacBooks, I do think there's some value in trying to figure out which way is the best value for your dollar. Because no matter what age of technology it is, we always wanna get the most value for what we're paying for. So for the basis of this video, we will use the earlier 2020 version of the MacBook Air as our point of comparison because I owned one and used one for a few months earlier this year. As we're using terms like saving the most money and the cheapest, we'll use the cheapest of the option for both of these computers that I can find on Apple's website. And that brings us back to the M1 MacBook Air, which has the M1 processor with an eight core CPU, seven core GPU, and the 16 core neural engine, eight gigabytes of unified memory, and a 256 gigabyte solid state drive, rounding all of that out with a price tag of $999. Or if you do have that educator's discount, thanks to everybody that keeps reminding me of that, if you have the education discount, you can get it for $899, which is an even more phenomenal deal. In the other corner, we have the i3 version of the 2020 MacBook Air in the refurbished section of Apple's website, which, okay, if I can take just a second of your time, this is a phenomenal place to go to save money on Apple products, especially in a few months when the M1 Max hit, that storefront is gonna be bananas. I buy a lot of stuff from the Apple refurbished website. Back to the i3 MacBook Air. This comes with a dual core Intel processor clocked in at 1.1 gigahertz. It has eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and also has a 256 gigabyte solid state drive. This cheapest and not all that old option will come in at eight hundred dollars and that is probably the absolute cheapest you will find a newish apple laptop the reason i say newish is when you buy something from the refurbished section apple treats them like they are basically brand new you get the same packaging well okay on the packaging one little part will say refurbished you get the same warranty the same return policy and you can buy apple care if you want it's basically like buying a brand new laptop for less money i love I could make a whole video, and I have made a whole video on how much I enjoy that. Physically, these two laptops will basically be the exact same. There will, okay, there will be one differences between the keyboards in that the M1 MacBook Air does have a dedicated emoji button. You'd think that wouldn't be as big of a deal, but as somebody that speaks mainly in emojis, oh yeah, it's a big deal. It might be 37, but that still makes me a millennial. I love emojis. If you saw me, if you follow me on Twitter, you know I love emojis. So both computers will have retina panels. Both computers will have phenomenal keyboards. Both computers will have two Thunderbolt 3 ports, yada, 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 yada. Physically, same thing. Where we are really going to see a difference is in three different places. Battery life, performance, and the thermal system managing all of that. And let's cover those in reverse order of that, which... I guess, why did we have to do it in reverse order? I could have just typed the script differently. Dang, video production is just weird. Okay, so thermal performance is the most important thing about a laptop. Doesn't matter what specs you've got inside of it, if the heat isn't managed properly, those specs will not run in the way that you want them to, or more importantly, in the way that you are paying for them to run. Intel processors generate a lot of heat. That should not come as a surprise, because that's just one of the things they do. And what's crazy about this comparison is one of these machines does have an active cooling system and the other doesn't. That's not all that remarkable. We talk about lots of laptops that have that thing with them, but the thing that's crazy is the one without the active cooling system is actually the one that is the better thermally managed machine. The M1 MacBook Air, seriously, this thing doesn't have a fan in it. There is no fan inside of this machine. It does have a passive cooling system, but as far as actively moving hot air away from the processor and other sensitive bits, there's nothing. 
There is nothing that you find in here that does that. And despite all that, I've yet to have a thermal problem with this computer. And I use this an awful lot. I, this is my only computer that I do all of my daily work on. I do all of my photo editing on it. And from time to time, I'll do video editing on it. The only reason I don't use it primarily as my video editing computer is I have the M1 Mac mini set up at my desk is like, the computer that's always ready to go. Now using the M1 MacBook Air, some of those heavy tasks will cause the bottom of the laptop to get warm, but nothing really more than that. The biggest problem, the biggest problem I have with the earlier models of the MacBook Air is how poorly thermally managed they are. I'm not sure I blame Apple for all of that. Sure, they made the laptop and they designed it, but there's only so much space you have on these ultra thin laptops and I did say Intel chips do make sure that you stay warm in the winter time. And if you go back and watch some of my older content talking about the i3 MacBook Air, you'll be able to hear the fan basically all of the time because even though the i3 is a puny dual core processor, it'll start to thermally throttle that clock speed almost immediately after you start using it. But that's another reason we picked the cheapest version of the MacBook Air to make this video about. It's the only version of that Intel-based MacBook Air that has half of a chance to actually be useful because of how much thermal throttling happens. Sure, there are other processor options for that. You could buy the quad-core i7 model, but you won't get anywhere near the max of the i7 performance and are absolutely wasting your money. You're throwing that money away because you will never get i7 performance. Even with the i7, you'll get i3 kinds of performance. So when it comes to thermal performance between the M1 and Intel, it's not even close. Next up, let's compare the two for battery life. The new M1 MacBook Air has a reported 18 hours of battery life. And well, thankfully, oh, thankfully, I don't have to use my laptop for 18 hours at a time. I can safely say that I almost never need to worry about if this will have a charge at the end of the day. I go for a couple of days at a time between charges on this thing because not only does it sip battery life, like the way you use it, it just sips the battery life. You never see like big chunks taken out of it. The way its CPU is designed, more on this in a second, when you shut it off like the iPads, it loses almost no power if you aren't directly using it. It's shut. This thing will basically lose no power. If I come back to it tomorrow, maybe I'll lose a percentage point. And what makes the M1 so power efficient is the CPU is built in a pretty neat way. When we did the spec overview, I mentioned that this is an eight core CPU. Well, four of those cores are high performance cores, letting you do things like video editing, playing games, etc. The other four are high efficiency cores. So if the computer doesn't need power at any moment, it lets the high efficiency cores take over, giving you that incredible longevity, or it seems like it turns on before you actually want it to turn on. All of that stuff comes without having all that big of a battery. The i3 MacBook Air has an 11 hour reported battery life. And you know what? That's not too bad either. You've heard me say this in all of my tech videos, but when it comes to battery life, all I'm willing to pass judgment on is if a product can last one full work day. I'm a working professional. My job pays the bills. YouTube is just a hobby of mine. So that's what I care about when I'm buying a laptop is can it get me through a full day and then I'll charge it when I get home. And that doesn't mean that I exactly need to use it for eight hours straight because that's not how an office worker works. There will always be a meeting. There will always be a phone call that pops up taking you away from your task at hand. Trust me, offices, plenty of distractions. And 11 hours of battery life is really, really good. It's just that when we compare that older tech to the modern marvel that is the Apple Silicon MacBooks, that's the only time that it would seem bad because 11 hours by itself is better than a lot of other laptops out on the market. But that seven hour difference is a pretty big difference. It is basically a full other workday that you get just out of the laptop. Bringing us to the final of differences between these two computers. And again, it's not gonna be a very fair comparison, but let's talk about performance. When we start talking about actual performance, there is no real comparison. And the eight core M1 processor absolutely trounces and destroys the two core Intel i3 processor. It's not making this video, it's not really all that fair. We'll talk some numbers in a second, but if you are an office worker or a student, you really have to ask yourself, do you care about power? I mean, legit, you gotta find out what is your actual requirement. Because if your whole use for this laptop is to type notes in class, respond to emails, do some spreadsheets, maybe create a PowerPoint or two, do you really need an eight core CPU, seven core GPU, and 16 core neural engine? I mean, legit, do you need that much power to get your work done? Probably not. So while you might see some small difference in the overall performance of the machines, the numbers might not be all that big of a deal for you personally. Back to those numbers. When it comes to single core scores, the M1 scores up there with some of the biggest and strongest of the current Intel lineup. And in multi-core scores, it again, it's, it's very 
well where these processors are with the i3. Well, I mean, doing simple math, I'm a simple man, not an engineer. I would assume that two cores would be less than eight cores for like multi-core workflow. Again, I would probably say where you're really gonna see the biggest performance difference in that the M1 MacBook Air is built around Apple Silicon and if you use primarily applications and programs that are already built around that ecosystem, you'll enjoy some benefits like almost instantaneous program execution, you'll enjoy very quick response times and even with eight gigabytes of unified memory, you'll rarely come across a slowdown or issue with functionality, which is really where you will notice the performance performance difference in the i3. The i3 will barely be able to run the latest and greatest software and you'll need to use as many of Apple first party software applications anyway to get the most out of it. And in that situation where you're using all Apple software, you might as well use the M1 version anyway. One thing in fairness that I'll say in the Intel Air's favor is that at least as of today, you'll still be able to run Windows through bootcamp. Well, if the processor can handle it and not melt inside of the computer's chassis, you can run it. That functionality is still turned off on the M1 MacBooks. And I have seen some videos of enthusiasts getting Windows ARM to run on the latest Macs. I'm not sure that I'd call that a reliable solution at this point. So that is a definite tick mark in the Intel Air's favor. And those are really the major differences. 2020 was the year that Apple replaced all of their old butterfly keyboard models. So both of these laptops will have basically the best keyboard that you can get on a laptop today. Saying that having to bounce between this Air and a Windows laptop for another series of videos I've been making is tough. This new, well, new slash old style of keyboard is absolutely my favorite to work on. You'll also get those two Thunderbolt 3 ports making these computers very versatile and you'll have a very easy time finding dongles and docks that will allow you to plug them into a monitor, keyboard, and all other accoutrements. The speakers on both will be about as good as you'll get on an Ultrabook and the trackpad will be the Apple standard, which is a fancy way of saying it's the best on the market. But at the end of the day, so what, right? Yes, the M1 MacBook Air is superior in basically every single way, minus running the Windows thing. But could you really run Windows through a Core i3 on a MacBook? Eh. All of that benefit will cost you around $200 more. So the real question of this video is, are the updates and upgrades of the M1 MacBook Air worth $200. Are they worth that money? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I really struggled making this video because for me, the M1 MacBook Air is easily the superior option. It was such a winner that it almost felt unfair to the older Mac to even bring it into this ring. Like you don't bring a lightweight boxer and a super heavyweight boxer to fight each other. It's unfair. And this is the super heavyweight boxer, even though it's lighter. The battery life alone makes this the best ultra book on the market, but add in that you'll have no noise because of no fan and that you also don't need that fan because it's magically thermally managed, puts this computer on an entirely other laptop plane of functionality. Like this laptop is on its own pedestal. Add on top of that, you can get comparable real performance to a three or four times as expensive MacBook Pro 16. It's just a winner. Just a winner. Not just against the older MacBook Air, but against almost everything else in the market in my opinion. However, if, and I do want to clarify a big if right here, if you only intend to use this MacBook, like I said earlier, typing emails, browsing the web a few tabs at a time, taking notes and doing purely clerical things, and you are on a very strict budget to save the most amount of money, because frankly, $1,000 is still very expensive. In that specific situation, I would recommend the older MacBook Air. The Apple Refurbished website is an awesome resource that is my go-to place for saving money on my computers. My personal MacBook Pro 16 that I still own and use from time to time today is a refurbished version that I absolutely love. And I've had no problems within what, like the eight or nine months that I've owned it. I would say if you are looking for a MacBook Air and you wanna buy a MacBook Air, save up that extra 200 bucks because there is far more than $200 worth of value between the two computers. The MacBook Air, the M1 MacBook Air, is just mind bogglingly good. And if you like this video and you're planning on getting either of those machines, good news, good news for you that I've got a video that will show you the best accessories that you can get. And these add-ons, these accessories will work with both versions of this laptop. And you can find that by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. <laughs> Thanks for watching.